Here is the donor. 302 swap. Got a single turbo set up there. Hopefully that fits. If it doesn't, got a welder. But uh, my main focus is going to be that as far as these videos go. And uh, so that the turbo header and the wiring because there's a lot of confusion for that at least this is going to be specific to this 2000 model year with a 99 explorer donor so uh today popping this old 3.0 out it's got a blown head gasket so it runs but doesn't run good enough to drive it around so you know good excuse to upgrade if it breaks upgrade it All right, so did a test fit yesterday. The uh, turbo headers will not fit, uh, at least the initial layout. But um, the Rick's Rangers mounts did not work with this 3.0 setup. So these both have the straight, um, the straight studs. But I believe it's because of the spacer. The, all the other images I've seen, the spacer is not here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it out. But unfortunately, it's any accessible through behind the coil spring so I'm hoping that when I jack up the truck the suspension will drop and it'll give me space for an extension so when this uh, mount is on that spacer it pushes it to the left and up so what was happening this side was aligning on the swap bracket but this side the slot that was supposed to be aligned to the studs was about here so that tracks and when you're looking at it in the front it really does appear that that right side is a little bit higher which makes sense if it's got a spacer so this is a 2000 just to recap 2000 30 flex fuel truck both one both sides had the straight studs but the driver's side had the spacer so this is what we're dealing with That little, there's an opening right there. And unfortunately, the camera may not pick it up. Right there. Come on, focus. You can just barely see it. Right there, that's the nut for the motor mount and uh, maybe you could fish a universal in here but I don't think you could get enough torque to break it free not if these bolts are torqued anything like the motor mounts like the brackets are on the motor so <sighs> the entire suspension might have to come out well entire as in you know taking that ball joint apart dropping all this spring out sway bar links oh god and here's the aftermath and there's the stud all this for a motor mount got the engine sitting in here now the driver's side turbo manifold does not fit in this chassis. And it's mainly the steering shaft and control arm mount. However, this other side fits pretty well. See, there's an AC line running right there, so that have to be protected. But it does fit through there, runs right down, goes up to here. And this is a pretty big turbo, um, physically large. So it's um, it's downpipe route, not gonna work. Shooting straight back there, maintaining the AC and air box. So I'm thinking the plan for this guy is to just put a sharp elbow, carve out the fender liner here, and then run it 
as close to the frame as possible and then tuck it back in. Now, as for that side, the plan is to figure out what shorty header fits. If not, worst case, factory explorer manifold and then doing a rear crossover pipe. So, come back under here. There is, <clears throat> there's plenty of room to drop down from a header and then do a crossover and then run a two and a half inch pipe right below the motor mount. And you'll see right there is the tensioner for the alternator or the idler for the alternator bracket. So we'll have to get a different alternator bracket, but uh, there's enough space to get there and then go up to the turbo. So here's that idler pulley right there. So that pipe could come up anywhere in this, this area and then come straight up to the V-band right there. So with those cheap alternator relocation kits, it's, it should put it somewhere like right here. This obviously won't be pointing this way, it'll be pointing that way. So that'll give space for the alternator there and then that eliminates the auto tensioner and it'll be a manual tensioner with a little, uh, a little reverse thread rod somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where it bolts on, but that's, that's going to be the next piece that I try to fit up to uh, make this hodgepodge of parts work. That and obviously the header, but that should be any standard header. So future me is here and I'm coming to tell you that there is no alternator bracket that bolts onto the Ford Explorer water pump and timing cover. The top bolt of the Explorer is a through bolt, whereas the Fox body, it's just, it just bolts to the timing cover. So that difference means that all those cheap brackets just won't work. So after spending way too much time and money on other alternator combinations, trying to find a, a narrow alternator that would fit with a custom bracket, couldn't come across anything. I even went to the extremes of trying to swap internals on alternators to find a combination of parts that would let me bolt up to this thinner version of the alternator that I needed to make this work. So something that I'm, it's new to me because I'm pretty new to the small block Ford world is that the Fox body has a really deep crank pulley and belt assembly, fan pulley assembly, whereas the Explorer is very narrow and thin and that just won't let you use the the older style alternators or even the the new edge mustang alternators like uh like the fox bodies guys like to upgrade to so unfortunately those cheap amazon brackets just don't work <laughs>